Aren't we all called in some way to follow after Christ as an apostle, as a disciple of his? Aren't we all called to be a teacher to our young ones, to others who are coming up after us? Aren't we all called in some degree in all of those ways that Paul was called to in a large degree? Sure we are. We all have share some of that calling in our life because God has given us all uh, some of that calling uh, as well. So uh, he says, I, for this reason I also suffer these things and I'm not ashamed. You ever go back to the shame? I am not ashamed. I know Pastor Kent when he left, the one thing that bothered him the most was he was ashamed that he wasn't able to finish the sermon and he was embarrassed by that. Nothing for him to be embarrassed about, is there? You know, all the folks who were here in the early service, they were just grateful for this man of God. They weren't upset that he couldn't finish the sermon. They wanted him to be well and to be healthy. You know, that's the way we should love one another, isn't it? That's the way we should care about one another. Uh, we have nothing to be ashamed of. We have nothing to be embarrassed about when we're standing for Christ. We need to stand up for him. So we're going to recognize the faith that we have. We're going to rekindle that faith, get it blowing again with the God's Holy Spirit, get it glowing again with the love of, of Christ. And we're going to finally retain that, no matter what happens in life. Uh, it says in verse 13, Retain the standard of sound words which you have heard from me, for in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard what the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, the treasure which has been entrusted to you. It's up to us, folks. We're either going to retain what God has given to us and develop it, get it out there for other people to hear and to know, or this is going to be the last generation of Christians on planet Earth. Retain the sound words of God. Retain the teachings of his word. Folks, this is the final screen for everything we should believe. Amen? The word of God. The Bereans were more noble than other people, it says in Acts 9, uh, because they investigated what Paul said according to the word of God. Paul says, now that you know what the word of God says, and we do know a lot of it, don't we? We don't know it all, but we know a lot of it. He says, retain that sound measure. Retain that, that teaching. Retain it so that you can be strong no matter what life throws at you. So that if you're in prison for the Lord, you can be like the Apostle Paul, still making a difference in whatever circumstance you are in. If you're suffering for the Lord, you can still make a difference for the Lord Jesus Christ because you are retaining the sound words uh, that you are guarding the, through the Holy Spirit, the treasure that's entrusted to you. That you are guarding through the Holy Spirit the treasure that's entrusted to you. God has given us a treasure, hasn't he? God has given us a great gift. This salvation that we enjoy. This fellowship with a holy, loving God. God has given us a great treasure uh, we need to guard it. We need to guard it. Hang on to it. Hang on to it with all of our might. Uh, guard it. Keep it pure. Keep it right. Guard the truth of it as we share it. Amen? So we're taking the word of God and, and, and we're guarding the treasure of God, of God so that we can continue to serve God throughout our life. Amen? So what are those three R words? Do you remember what they are? Recognize the gift that God has given to you through generations, uh, through the legacy that you've received. Rekindle the fire that God has given you in your heart. Get the Holy Spirit blowing on it again. Get excited about Christ again and sharing the good news with others, inviting them to church. Retain the truth that God has given to you. Retain it. Make it a part of your daily life. Read it every day. Make it a part of your life so that you can hang on to it through the tough time. It's the truth that will guide you through 
anything that you go through in life. So we're ready, right, to recognize, to rekindle, and to retain so that we can serve God as God would have us to. Would you bow with me, please, in prayer? Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit and your Holy Spirit's presence with us today. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word and how it speaks to us. Lord, I pray that the, the truth of your word, those, that sound word that you give to us, the Lord, would sink deep into our heart, would help us to appreciate the faith that has been passed on to us, perhaps through our parents, perhaps through a, a, a loving friend, perhaps through a boss or somebody who has told us about Jesus. Lord, help us to also want to rekindle that fire that we first felt when we received it so that we can serve you with our whole hearts in the calling that you've put upon our life. You, Lord, you have made it possible for us to affect others. And Lord, I pray that you would grant to us uh, a desire, a fresh desire, a, a burning desire to share that good news with other people that you have given to us. And Father, then I pray that, that we would also continue to study your word, continue to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we would continue to guard that, that special relationship, to, to ask you to guard our hearts against impurity and against sin. Lord, that we would continue to live in, in fellowship with you all of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're here today and you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, I invite you to start a journey that will never have an end. I invite you today to begin a fresh a, a, a fire in your heart that you never have to, to have be cold again or lonely again because Jesus Christ is real. And he wants to be real in your heart and life. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, I'd be glad to share with you how you can make that a reality today. But if you're a Christian here today and you found that the embers are grown kind of cold, I ask you today to rekindle the fire in your heart. To ask the Lord to blow his Holy Spirit on you and to make you on fire for God again. What would happen to this community if this church got on fire for God? What would happen? The community would change. I'm telling you, it would change. People are waiting for authentic Christianity to be shown by others, by Christians. They're waiting for that. And when they see it, they'll come to it to find out how to have it themselves. If you're here as a Christian, ask God to rekindle that fire in your heart. Let's all stand as we sing together. If God's spoken to your heart today, I'm going to be here to pray with you. If you want to come and, and ask about Jesus, I'd be glad to share with you how you can have Jesus in your heart. If you just want to make some other commitment to God, you're welcome to come and I'll be glad to pray with you.